Can't get enough sports shorts? Tune into Sports Shorts TV on Cox HD Channel 1013, Mondays at 8, Tuesdays at 9, and Etel Channel 4. That's 52 weeks a year to get educated on sports by the best. Joel Davis and Ronnie Rance. Welcome, everyone, to this week's edition of Sports Shorts, presented by LaBerge Casino. Ronnie Rance here with you. It's a big, big week uh, in sports. Of course, LSU Tigers are on a roll. Joe Burrow looks like he... Uh, he might even win the Heisman. Uh, we, we're talking about him being the front runner with Tua getting the high ankle sprain and Joe keep putting up numbers. I mean, he's really the guy to beat at this point. So we'll talk some LSU football, the New Orleans Saints 5-0 and with Teddy Bridgewater at the helm. In an interview last night after the game, Drew Brees said he might even be back this week for the Cardinals. He's going to practice this week and, ex- and, and as if he's starting. Uh, we'll see. Sean Payton's saying something different, but uh, Drew Brees told CST's uh, – Mike Neighbors after the game, and he's going to try to start this week against the Cardinals. But the other big story, of course, is the World Series that gets underway between the Nationals and the Astros. And a guy who knows a lot about the World Series, he'll be participating in it. He's already won one. His former LSU pitcher, Baton Rouge resident Will Harris. How you doing, Big Will? I'm doing well, Ron. I appreciate you having me on. Congratulations, man, on a fantastic season, not only for you personally, but for your team and I, you know, this time around, your role with the Astros in the World Series even bigger than it was. I, I feel like the last time, uh, things have just kind of come together for you this year and the team. Talk about just the chemistry and and the, and the fantastic season you and the and the squad has had. Uh, yeah, yeah, my role definitely has a little bit different. In seventeen, I was injured uh, for like six weeks in August and early September, so I was just really kind of fighting back, trying to. Uh, be able to participate that uh, that postseason and was lucky enough to to get in there and and you know and pitch in quite a few games but uh, but yeah this team's different uh, it's different and the same in a lot of ways um, everybody's a little bit older a little bit more you know uh, mature kind of been through the ringer a little bit more losing last year against Boston uh, you know definitely uh, left a sour taste in our mouth and this year we go out and win 106 or 107 games or whatever it was and uh, had a really tough battle with Tampa Bay. I mean, that's a team that can really pitch with anybody. Uh, and then we're, uh, you know, home field advantage over the Yankees proved to be a pretty uh, pretty, pretty big thing. You mentioned it, you know, a couple of years ago, you know, just like in, in, in college baseball, you went to the College World Series twice. That first time you ever go to a World Series or whether, you know, Major League, College World Series, there's always that, awe factor there's a little bit of can't believe we're here this time around does it feel a little bit more like a business trip even more so yeah it's definitely for me i know it's 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 completely different i mean when you're when you're doing things you've never done before it's it's just a natural thing to to your heart rate maybe gets a little bit quicker because you don't know what to expect and what maybe lies around the corner but now it's uh you know we this is my fourth postseason I've been in uh you know I've pitched in a lot of big games I've pitched in Yankee Stadium before in a, in a wild card game you know do or die game in 15 and, uh pitched there in the ALCS in 17 and you know I actually pitched pitched poorly in 17 uh against New York they actually had my number for my entire tenure in the big leagues really so for me it was kind of like well I've already failed here so what's what you know, what's worse what you know could happen really matter at this point you know so uh uh so it was you know kind of took the pressure off of me and allowed me just to kind of look i'm just going to do what i do and uh maybe it'll be different this time and uh and and, and it was i was able to you know pitch pitch well against new york and and looking forward to the uh the challenge that lies ahead with uh, the nationals because i mean you know that's the neat thing about the World Series is you're facing guys you haven't faced. You don't know really anything about unless maybe you played them that year in interleague, which we didn't do this year with Washington. So I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing how this thing shakes out. You know, it, you're not a spring chicken. Well, you're in your mid thirties, but from an outsider's perspective, you know, you, you look like you're pitching your best baseball of of your career. Where are you physically? Where are you at as far as uh, you know? other times in your career where you've had hot streaks and, and been on fire, is this the best you've been? Um, you know, yeah, I mean, my, my arm has always felt pretty good. Besides that little hiccup I had in 2017, after I got through all of my surgery and all that stuff back in 2009 and 10, um, uh, my arm's kind of really, you know, I take care of it. 
when you go through Tommy John and things like that, you get so used to being in the training room and doing things for your arm on a regular basis that it just kind of becomes natural to you. So I really try and take care of my arm as well as I can, as much as I can, even in the off season and in season. But, but yeah, I mean, I feel older, <laughs> you know I mean? I got two young kids, and, you know, and, and things like that. So I do, I do feel older now, but when it comes to baseball, and it, each and every day, like at the field, I feel, I mean, it's never changed now. And I've been in professional baseball now for 14 years, I guess, the year I got drafted in 2006. So uh, it feels pretty normal to me. My body feels good uh, when I'm out there and the adrenaline's pumping. Uh, it's, uh, it's business as usual. So uh, I like to do it, man, for as long as I can. Uh, it's a lot of fun playing for an organization like Houston. You know, being this close to home, everybody can catch the games back on on TV and, uh, in Louisiana. So, uh, yeah, I feel great. And uh, I'm, you know, I don't have any plans of slowing down anytime soon. Well, being a reliever, um, obviously that's quite different than, than being a starter. You're, you're on this, on a squad that has three guys in the front end of its rotation. Two of them are going to be in the major league baseball hall of fame. And obviously if Cole doesn't get injured, he, he's, he, he could be headed that way in, in his future. Um, what do you learn from them? What's that like being on a team like that? Can you pick up anything as a reliever from 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 starters that are you know Hall of Fame material? You definitely can. Uh, as a reliever, we're more of like every day, same. We're showing up, trying to get our three outs and shutting it down. Right? So have a beer, we'll do it again tomorrow. You know, but uh, starters are different. Their preparation is so detailed and so in depth. And it starts so many days before they actually take the mound that there is no stone unturned when it comes to these guys, especially the guys that we have. And they they bounce stuff off of one another. They you know uh, they, they they talk about hitters, how they're going to approach hitters. They know they have different stuff, you know. But they say, okay, well, if I had your stuff, maybe I would do this and that. And it's it's really interesting to watch them do that uh and you can pick up on it and kind of think like all right like i I know pitching to my strengths is really important and but where's that fine line of of you know exploiting a guy's weaknesses as opposed to pitching to my strengths and yeah you know and and so it's it's pretty neat to watch these guys uh do that the way they prepare uh, obviously you know jv being long in the tooth like myself and still pitching at a high level uh, is a testament to his preparation that he puts in for every single start is is unmatched, and I think other guys see that, and it's uh, it's good for our younger guys to see that. You know, I mean, you know, we're, uh, this team next year could look different. We could have some younger guys in our rotation. Um, so with Garrett, you know, being a free agent, Wade Miley being a free agent, so uh, it's uh, it's good for these guys to feed off of each other. Uh, just a real quick thought on Garrett Cole. I mean, what what he's doing uh, at the major league level would be impressive if he did this in high school. You know, yeah, I mean, the, yeah, the types yeah. of numbers and how dominant he is. I mean, it's literally like someone at a low level high school just dominating hitters. I, I, I mean, it's to do it for a week or two would be incredible. This guy's been doing it for months. Yeah, you know, it's funny you say that because, like, I actually kind of uh, I said something this the other day. Somebody was talking about their high school numbers, right? And guys, you know, you guys, uh, we're messing around. I'm like, buddy, I tell my teammates, I can say his name. I'm like, look, we were all really good in high school, okay? Right, <laughs> like, right. Like, there's nobody on this field that wasn't the man in high school, okay? <laughs> so save it with that stuff. But I did say, but not everybody is Garrett Cole. Like, just, he is, he's different. And the thing that I say about Garrett is his tenacity on the mound is unmatched by anybody and it's contagious, you know? And like, there's a reason, you know, that his last, whatever starts he's made, he's 19 or 20 and oh, you know, like we got to score runs too. You know, we got to play good defense behind him too. You know, we're not, we're not kicking balls when GC is pitching, you know, we're scoring runs. We're in it because he has this energy about him that he is there to dominate you that day and he's going to do it and he's going to do it looking you in the eyes you know and it's like it's awesome like I love it I love watching that guy compete uh it's at another level and when you put that kind of you know competitive nature with 
unbelievable amount of talent that he has, that he can do things with a baseball that I've never even dreamt of doing, then that's what you get. You get, uh, you know, a guy who's 20 whatever and 0 in his last start and sets record, sets a new record every time he takes the mound. One last thing before we let you go, uh, Will. Um, you talked about Cole's competitiveness and how you love watching him pitch. I know you're a Tiger through and through, and uh, you got to be just pumped about Joe Burrow. Talk about another competitive guy. I mean, how, how fired up are you for what LSU's doing right now? It's it's pretty man. I actually got to watch the game this past Saturday nice. because we had we had a night game, and it, they've been playing a lot of night games, and they've been you know t- t- timing has been bad for me. But yeah, I got to watch the guy play. Obviously, man, his numbers and what he's going to do at LSU, you know, by the time this season's over, uh, is going to be one of the all timers, you know, if not the greatest season in the history of, of, of LSU football when it comes to, you know, passing touchdowns and stuff like that. But more importantly, the stuff that I look for that I just said is he's a guy you want to root for. He's a, you know, he's a guy you want to play behind, you want to line up next to. And so that's the stuff that gets me going. Because, like, talent, there's a lot of guys that have talent in this world. You've played with a lot of them. I've played with a lot of them. You've talked to a ton of them. But it's that separate, you know, that, that, that it factor, that X factor that some guys have. Joe has it. And uh, and there's a reason why, you know, is sitting where they're at now, headed into Saturday to play Auburn. And he is a big piece of that. And so I'm pumped, man. Coach, I, I mean, if, if the Tigers beat Alabama – uh, he's going to be the Heisman Trophy winner. I don't oh, care. Yeah. I don't yeah. care what his numbers look like in that game no. or anything. They beat Alabama. He's going to win it. the Heisman. That's it. That's it. Exactly. And and they don't even think that. But 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 like just you know he uh, can't say enough good things about him. I know yeah. the guy. Obviously, there's a new article written about him probably every single day, and the national media is you know is picking up on him now. And you know how the Heisman train is, man. Like need the hype. So I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't slow down hoping it continues to build and build and build and build for him because it seems like there's always somebody that comes out, you know, in a championship weekend who's been playing well, puts up a big game, and then sometimes that's, that, that's enough to kind of push them over the finish line. So hopefully for Joe, uh, his media hype uh, keeps, keeps, keeps rolling downhill. Well, best of luck, man, in, in, the, in the World Series. Uh, I know a lot of LSU fans have three Tigers to pull for you, uh, Bregman and, uh, and Andrew Stevenson over at the Nationals. He's actually on a That's plane right. headed down to, to Houston as we speak. But uh, uh, best of luck. We'll be watching. We'll see you soon. All right, guys. I appreciate it. All Thanks. right. There's Will Harris, who uh, actually lives in Baton Rouge with his wife and two kids. His brother, Clay Harris, of course, was a stud baseball player for, uh, uh, for the Tigers. Uh, under Smoke Laval. Both of them played for Smoke Laval and went to the College World Series a couple of times while now trying to win his second ring in the big leagues and playing a huge role in the back end of that bullpen. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll talk to another guy, another great baseball player who uh, knows a lot about football, was offered a number of football scholarships. Mikey Matsuk will join us here in studio on Sports Shorts, presented by LaBerge. Politicians are making things way more complicated than necessary. The priorities are pretty simple. Fix our roads and bridges so people can get to work, school, and back home safely. Protect tops, technical schools, make our classrooms smarter, safer. Put the focus in healthcare back on care. And it's time for a 21st century jobs plan. It's not complicated. Gus Rance is right. It's not complicated. Gus Rance for state representative. If you're an avid sports fan, then you need to check out the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame, located in historic downtown Natchitoches, next to the Chateau St. Denis Hotel and the Natchitoches Convention Center. The Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame is where the rich history of Louisiana sports is told through the pictures, artifacts, and by the legends themselves in video archives. Come to the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame and Northwest Louisiana History Museum and visit a world-renowned architectural marvel. For more information and to purchase tickets to the annual Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame events, visit lasportshall.com backslash purchase. Introducing the Mercedes-Benz family of vans. 
including the full-size Sprinter and the mid-size Metris. If these are your wingtips, if this is your gourmet latte, then these are your vans. Vans for professionals. Strictly professionals. Best commercial van residual value according to ALG and starting at just $25,995. Mercedes-Benz. Vans. Born to When you come to Relief Windows, your experience starts here. Or here. Then we come to your home. We measure twice. And then we bring custom windows to your home. We remove your old windows. Install your new windows. Clean our mess. And we make sure you're completely satisfied. And all of this before you pay a dime. And at Relief Windows, our number one product is customer satisfaction. Relief Windows! Can't get enough sports shorts? Tune into Sports Shorts TV on Cox HD Channel 1013, Mondays at 8, Tuesdays at 9, and Etel Channel 4. That's 52 weeks a year to get educated on sports by the best. Joel Davis and Ronnie Rance. Welcome back, everybody, to Sports Shorts, presented by LaBear's Casino. We had Will Harris on, who's getting ready to play in the World Series, going after his second ring. Now we bring in another big leaguer, a guy, another former Tiger in a big leaguer. This guy knows probably a little bit, little bit more about football than Will, although he's a big <laughs> fan. This guy could play it a little bit. Let's bring in Mikey Matzek. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are good you? Good to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Sorry just, my voice is a little messed up. Just came back from a bachelor party. Uh, when's the when's the wedding? Wedding is January 17th. Nice. So yeah. coming up, yeah. Well, congratulations, man. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank your you. first one, right? First one, yeah. She still has a few months. <laughs> she has a few months to back out if she wants. Very so, good. Yeah. Very good. Well, I'm sure you had a great time over there in Jamaica. Um, as uh, – Look, this this time of the year is one of my favorite times of the year. You're right in the middle of football. You know, of course, right now, I mean, between what the Raging Cajuns are doing, LSU, mm -hmm. I know Tulane had a hiccup, but they're on their way to an, a nine-win season probably. Right. You got the Saints, the Tigers. I mean, football is rolling. And then, oh, by the way, we, we're poised to have one of the better World Series maybe ever. When you're talking about the six starting pitchers right, right, that right. are going to go against each other, I mean, my goodness, it's going to be incredible. No, it's been a fun time to be a sports fan in Louisiana and just really in general. So it's uh, football-wise, obviously, it's football season, so I kind of – baseball's winding down. And, and But football in Louisiana, you don't get much better, and especially when the Saints and LSU um, are playing really well. Before – I'm going to talk a little baseball first, then we'll yeah. delve into plenty of, of, of football. But uh, – <clears throat> Going into the playoffs, I mean, you're a guy that's still in the Detroit organization. And, and let's take the LSU ties aside. I mean, right. obviously folks around yeah. here really, you know, Will Harris, Alex Bregman, and a lot of Astros, and, you know, being four hours away, three hours away, depending on where you live, you're a big fan of the Astros. But that aside, uh, going into the playoffs, one, uh, did you have a, did you have a team outside of Detroit that you pulled for or you thought you would win it? Um, well, not, nobody, not necessarily a pull for, um, I was on the Moscona show earlier a couple weeks ago and I made the picks and I got half wrong. So <laughs> I don't know how good, but no, my pick to win it was were the Dodgers. I know they had been there a few times in a row, a couple mm. times in a row. And I just thought they were going to put it together. And obviously that, that didn't happen, but I don't think anybody expected the nationals to do what they're doing. You know, their, their pitching staff, so their starting pitching has always been really good, but their bullpen was right. kind of up and down. And then. Um, you know, but you don't really need much of a bullpen whenever your thing. starting pitching is going seven, eight yeah. innings. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Their their starting pitch is so dominant that exactly. the bullpen could be you and you and I right 100%, now. One hundred percent, just underhanded. Be, be all right. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, uh, I don't even. Know. I think they got one lefty in the bullpen. I don't think they've got anybody yeah, else. Yeah, I think Doolittle's <laughs> the only throws, one they got out there. He yeah. throws the whole time. Yeah. Uh, but, all right. So you thought the Dodgers? I'm glad your pick wasn't right. I'm not. A, I'm not a big Dodgers fan. They're kind of now going to be the uh, Buffalo Bills of the playoffs. Yeah, that's it what it looks like. like. Um, but I, I really thought. I thought the Yankees or the Astros all along. Yep. Um, and, of course, it was a great series. It didn't go seven, but it was an epic six. Right. Uh, before we get off that series and talk about the Nationals for a minute, uh, DJ LeMayu, I mean, <laughs> you played with them at LSU. Yeah. And I, you know, he only played two years. A Michigan guy came down here, had the early birthday, so he, could, he left after his sophomore year. 
I, I thought he was going to be a really good player, and I thought he'd play in the big leagues a while because he could hit the other way. I mean, the guy was a great inside-out hitter. He had tremendous plate coverage, right. uh, and but he was just skinny, yeah. you know. But, oh. I mean, heck, he was, 19, he was 20, 20 years old, right? 100%. 21 years old. Um, he's now a grown man. Yeah. Um, but he still hits the other way. I mean, there's two home runs uh, in the Astros mm-hmm. against that with the other way. It's incredible. Uh, now he's got the grown man strength to go with the old man strength, right. and he's still got the same plate coverage. People slept on him when he was in Colorado. They, you know, not a great team. Well, everybody hits in Colorado. Now he's in the Big Apple, and he's still the best player in the field. One hundred percent. He, what he's doing now is what he's always done. And you talked about it, hitting, hitting, but it was just it wasn't necessarily how he like the hits. It was how he got the hits, like approach wise, and getting himself in counts that he's just a very smart hitter. You know, he's putting himself in counts where he was, he almost knew it was going to happen, what was coming. You know, and now he touched on it. He He's kind of matured in his, into his body a little bit, gotten stronger. So now instead of those, you know, doubles or singles to right center, they're home runs, and he's driving the ball a little bit more. And I played against him in the big leagues when he was in Colorado. And the the way he hits and the way he approaches the game is he could play in a little league field or he can play in the polo grounds. Right. And he's going to be the same type of player, you know. And those guys, they're going to play everywhere. They're going to be the superstars. I'm just glad he's in New York to where – People are starting to notice what we all right. have known. You know, you know. I don't know. I'm I'm sure the Yankees uh, thought about this, but uh, you know, <clears throat> it's so short in right field over there. And when you think of a short right field, you always think about a lefty, right? You know, right. you put a lefty in the lineup. Let's load those lefties because it just hit a little 350 foot ball and it goes out. That that is perfect for DJ LeMay. Perfect. You know, perfect. because not only do you have all the ground and left and left right. center for when he does hook it. But he's a guy that I mean, how many three hundred fifty five foot right. home runs is he gonna uh, hit? It's unbelievable. It's and to me, not just him, but any righty that can kinda of hit the ball a little bit the other way, a short portion right helps a right hander way more than helps a left hander just because it's it's just hard it's easier. You can get beat on you a fastball. Stay on the ball it's more. easier, it's easier, yeah. you know, it's it's a better swing. Instead of saying, Oh, I'm just gonna go up there and start trying to yank the ball over the fence as a lefty, it's like, well, that gets you in more bad habits than trying to stay on it. So I think it, it plays to his his strengths, and honestly, I think he has the perfect personality for New York. Because if you know DJ and you've talked to DJ, he's a man of few words. Right. He doesn't. He doesn't do the rah rah stuff. It's just he's a professional. He goes to the field every single day, ready to play, and he performs. And that's all. He, that's all he's got to do. You know, uh, for LSU fans, you know they're torn, right? It's a friendly, fun debate: DJ uh, LeMayu versus Alex Bregman. And and you know, I, I've said for years that Albert Bell was the greatest. Uh, LSU baseball player, right. you know, as far as professional career, right, right, right. and unfortunately, if he was a more, you know, a friendlier guy, he'd, yeah. he'd be probably in the, uh, you know, he want to, he'd win an MVP or two. He might be in the Hall of Fame. He's probably not going to be, you know, he didn't win an MVP, and he probably won't make the Hall of Fame because uh, he was just a, a tough dude. But, um, but best baseball player for a career, made a ton of money. DJ LeMayu now has that mantle. I mean, DJ yeah. LeMayu now is the greatest LSU baseball player. Uh, at the big league level for a career. Now, Alex Bregman's nipping on his heels, and yeah. he stays healthy for 10 more years. I'm sure it'll be him. But right. for the next decade, until that happens, right. it's DJ LeMayu. I mean, it's, Absol- look, absolutely. he's just quietly going about his business. And not only is – we talk about how good he is as, a, as an offensive player, but he's yeah. won two gold gloves. Right. Right. He, he went to New York, and they said, hey, you know what? We have an all-star second baseman and a young kid. We just want you to play everywhere. He said, all right. So he played first. He played third. He played short. He played second. Didn't really play short. But – Everywhere they put him, he performs. So, yeah, as a pure baseball player and as a successful baseball player, I don't even put money into it. I'm just talking about right. performance-based. I think DJ is the best. Obviously, everybody's in front, you know, close to Houston here, and you see Alex, and Alex Bregman's numbers are outrageous. But DJ's done it for longer. He's won the Silver Slugger, and he's going to continue to do it for a long time. So until DJ retires and allows Bregman to catch up to him, I think right. you're right. I think DJ is the best guy. It's interesting. It's a fun debate. Do you want a 330 hitter who hits 30 homers, or do you want a 290 hitter that hits 45 and a bunch of doubles? Probably the, the probably statistically, you want the 290 guy right. that hits the 50 doubles and the 40 homers and right, all that. Right. But uh, I tell you what, for a superstar, and DJ LeMayu is a superstar in the game of baseball, maybe yeah. not – on, he's not doing shampoo commercials and stuff right. like that. But but the baseball players and the teams know he's a superstar. And for him to be so unselfish, and you hit on it, this guy comes to New York, and it's not about him 
And he's like, hey, man, I'm, I'm up on gold gloves at second base. Hey, we want you to play somewhere else. No problem. Right. Just just put no. me in the lineup. Just let give me, me hit. There. Let me play wherever. I'm the, I mean, most it's not a lot of guys that mm. would do that. You know, nope. between their agents and all their people in their ear, you know, they're going, 100%. wait a minute. What, move that guy, not me. 100%. And that's just a testament to him just being a, a pure professional and just saying, you know what? He was in, he was in Colorado, and they didn't win. I'm going to go to New York, and I'm sure Colorado may have – I don't know the, the contract details. I'm sure they may have offered him a deal similar to what the Yankees did, but right. he had the opportunity to play for a championship, a World Series, and he said, you know what, I'm going to go I'm gonna go there, knowing who they had at second base, knowing that he probably was going to have to move positions, and he did it willingly, and he was their best player on the field. We know Alex Bregman, Will Harris over the Astros uh, in the World Series. They knock off DJ Mayu. They take on uh, the Nationals, and, and most people just have it being a landslide. Uh, for the Astros, not so fast, my friend. You know, as Lee Corso would say, Nationals have been resting. And, oh, by the way, those pitchers uh, that they have at the front of the rotation, granted, nobody's a Garrett Cole, but as a whole, they've been pitching about as good as the Astros have in the playoffs. So, uh, I, I, but I, but I want to talk about a guy, he may or may not play, but Andrew Stevenson. Yeah. You know, he may, not, he may or may not get in there, but went to the same high school as you at St. Thomas More in Lafayette. My brother, actually, and sister graduated from there as well. Um, thrilled for him. He's actually on the plane as we tape this show, uh, headed to, uh, to to Houston for the World Series. I mean, this guy, I, I've said this, I, I had the chance after a senior in high school to, to coach him. He played with me with the Marucci White Sox. It was him, uh, Blake Trahan, who was a great player. Mm-hmm. He's in AAA and big leagues with the Reds, uh, played at UL Lafayette. I had Kate Savick, who, of course, you know, playing with AAA with the uh, Detroit, and, um, and, and, and Stevenson. I, I, I would have lost my house. Mm-hmm. I would have lost my house. I'm not a good gambler anyway, but I would have <laughs> lost my house because I didn't think Andrew Stevenson would, would, would yeah. play in the big leagues. His swing was awful coming yep. out of high school. I yep. mean, it was a golf swing. It had about this much plate coverage. And the adjustment he made by himself in the summer from his freshman year to his sophomore year with the help a little bit of Andy Canizero was the greatest turnaround from a yeah. baseball player I've ever seen. Yep. He, I watched him a little bit in high school. Obviously, his athleticism, he flies. He covered a lot of ground in the outfield, but couldn't hit. He had like the, uh, just didn't really know what he was doing. The next year, he went to the almost the killer Rod stand. Carew, Rod kind Carew, of just flat the, back. the Chuck Knobloch, like mm-hmm. sideways, and just said, you know what, I'm gonna keep the bat in the zone as long as I can. I'm gonna use my strength. I'm just making contact. And then the next year it progressed a little bit, and he, I think he hit like three forty, right? Right, like yeah, he literally jumped up about buck seventy five from his yeah. freshman year to his sophomore year. And so then going into pro ball, he made some more adjustments, and now he's obviously not flat; he's back to mm-hmm. a normal looking stance. But he's still making contact; he still plays to his strength, and it just shows you that when you get in the postseason, <clears throat> at that point, the only thing that matters is winning. And if you do something that you can help us win. They're going to have you on the roster. You're running defense. He didn't yeah. play very much mm-hmm. during the season. They have a stacked outfield. Hey, we want you on the roster, even if that means we're going to have to bring a less pitcher, or because there's going to be a moment where we're going to have to pinch run you in the seventh, eighth, ninth, extra innings, right. or defensive replacement, and you're going to go there and you may score the run. And he was, and he was in the game when they came back and won. Um, I guess it was game two or something where he came back and he scored one of the runs to tie the game. So it just shows. It goes to show you that. They, they're going to do whatever it takes for them to win, and I'm just so happy for him because he's the greatest kid yeah, ever. Yeah, he, he's a great guy and a, a hard worker. And it just goes, what goes to tell you, inner belief, you know, because it could have been easy when he had sub-200 his freshman year at LSU. And, and there's a lot of great players that don't have great freshman right. year that go on to be good players. But in this day and age with the, you know, social media and games are on TV right. and there's always that, that outside pressure, he could have easily gotten down on himself and started to 100%. question things. Instead, he was like, no, no, no. I'm gonna figure it out, yeah. and and I, I say this. I mean, he's not amazing. He's, he's kind of like the Lemayu. He's a man of few words, but the, the turnaround he had and the fact that he's made it to the big leagues and be able to stick around is is sensational. Yeah, and it's, it's one of the better stories. I, I can't. I'm so happy for him. A great family, just great people. So he's he deserves it, and you know, go win a World Series and come back. I'm gonna let you make a prediction, man. I mean, man. you know, you got the Nationals and the Astros. Uh, it's gonna be Houston for the. He's got the home field. Um. I think it's I think it's gonna be a deep series. I still I'm gonna pick the Astros to win it, but like you said earlier, I don't think it's so cut and dry. I mean, you said they don't have a Garrett Cole. I mean Scherzer's Scher, I mean Scherzer's one yeah, two so he's, young. He's, he's one B. Right? Yeah, he's right there. And then you have Strasburg who's was the most highly touted pitcher coming out of the draft and no for some reason nobody wants to talk to him, but he's still one of the best pitchers in the game. And then 
you got the two guys. You have uh, Corbin, and then you have um, uh, you play with me in Detroit. I'm, I'm throwing a blank. Uh, um, Sanchez. Sanchez. Hannibal. Well, Sanchez was amazing. Right. He just got yeah, like a resurgence. So I'm gonna pick the Astros, but it's not so cut and dry. And all the veteran guys that are coming off the bench for the Nationals, and mixed with the young guys that they have, it's it's kind of a scary thing. And Anthony Rendon to me is the best player in the National League. You know, yeah, Rendon is is incredible. Um, the, I'm going to take the Astros, too. I think home field is is, is a deal in the playoffs. Uh, and, and you know, you, you're talking about – I mean, let's, Cole's still super young. He's a future Hall of Famer. Yeah. I mean, barring an elbow jumping out of his arm, you right. know, on a pitch or something, and tomorrow. Like, right. it has to happen right. Right. tomorrow. Right. One more year, it might yeah. not matter, right? right? But, I mean, like, he's a future Hall of – got three Hall of Famers in your rotation. you got home field advantage. Their lineup – especially the first six guys in that line. I mean, it's so dangerous. Right. You make a mistake, anybody can go yard on you. Right. And, and you got veteran guys that have had playoff experience. I, you know, can it go six? Yeah. But I, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a take the Astros, and, yeah. and, uh, <clears throat> and we'll have an, an Alex Bregman, Will Harris wave on midfield yeah, for, for sure. the Arkansas game or something. Yeah, I think, the their, bullpen, I think their bullpen's better too. So I think that helps. I think their bullpen will be yeah, better than the deeper. Nationals. So. But I think it's going to be – it'll be fun. It'll be like the Yankees series where they may win in six, but two of the games are going to be maybe some walk-off homer or something, something close. He's Mikey Montuk. I'm Ronnie Ranch. You're watching Sports Shorts presented by LaBearish Casino. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll talk a little LSU football with Mikey Montuk. He knows a little something about it. Played quarterback in high school, was offered a number of scholarships out of high school, chose the baseball route. But we'll talk some, some football and Joe Burrow next. sports fan, then you need to check out the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame, located in historic downtown Natchitoches, next to the Chateau St. Denis Hotel and the Natchitoches Convention Center. The Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame is where the rich history of Louisiana sports is told through the pictures, artifacts, and by the legends themselves in video archives. Come to the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame and Northwest Louisiana History Museum and visit a world-renowned architectural marvel. For more information and to purchase tickets to the annual Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame events, visit lasportshall.com backslash purchase. Politicians are making things way more complicated than necessary. The priorities are pretty simple. Fix our roads and bridges so people can get to work, school, and back home safely. Protect tops, technical schools, make our classrooms smarter, safer. Put the focus in healthcare back on care. And it's time for a 21st century jobs plan. It's not complicated. Gus Rance is right. It's not complicated. Gus Rance for State Representative. Introducing the Mercedes-Benz family of vans, including the full-size Sprinter and the mid-size Metris. If these are your wingtips, if this is your gourmet latte, then these are your vans. Vans for professionals, strictly professionals. Best commercial van residual value according to ALG and starting at just $25,995. Mercedes-Benz, vans, born to when you come to Relief Windows, your experience starts here. Or here. Then we come to your home. We measure twice. And then we bring custom windows to your home. We remove your old windows. Install your new windows. Clean our mess. And we make sure you're completely satisfied. And all of this before you pay a dime. And at Relief Windows, our number one product is customer satisfaction. Relief.
Can't get enough sports shorts? Tune into Sports Shorts TV on Cox HD Channel 1013, Mondays at 8, Tuesdays at 9, and Etel Channel 4. That's 52 weeks a year to get educated on sports by the best. Joel Davis and Ronnie Rance. Welcome back, everybody, to Sports Shorts, presented by LaBerge Casino. Ronnie Rance uh, visiting alongside Mikey Matuk. We'll get to Mikey here in just a minute. But uh, folks that are watching us over in the Lafayette kind of surrounding area, hey, November 16th is the elections coming up. And my brother, Gus Rance, is running for state rep, District 31. If you're, you're in the Milton area, if you're in Maurice, Scott, you know, you'll see his name on the ballot. He's in the runoff. And, uh, you know, give, give him a, a consideration. He's a good dude and uh, he uh, wants to make a difference over in the Lafayette area. St. Thomas Moore graduate, along with Mikey Matuk uh, from over that way. So give Gus Rance a chance. Um, we had Will Harris on earlier. He's pumped. You know, his role with the Astros, you know, in 17, he won a World Series, but he had been a little hampered, a little injured, wound up making the postseason roster. Just kind of happy to be there, happy to contribute this time around. I mean, the guy's like a fine wine. He's getting better with age. Uh, it's, I mean, the numbers, I think I saw a stat the other day. He's one of three people in all of baseball from 2017 to now that has a sub 2 4 ERA, <clears throat> something crazy like that, you know, and he's consistent. He does it with two pitches, right? And he just goes out there and battles, you know. And I was talking to him the other day. I was like, "Man, it's a really good thing Smoke only lets you throw 18 innings because right. I don't he know if his arm. Your, your arm would hang." He goes, "Yeah, I agree." Because yeah. I don't think I would have been able, be able to do this for as long. Yeah, I mean, not only did he not pitch until the very end of his senior year at LSU, but and and the bullpen, but you know, he missed a couple of years with the arm injury around 09, 010, you know, ten. So, yeah, I mean, as much, uh, you know, you look at the age, I don't know, is he 35, 36, something like yeah, that? Yeah, 34, you know, 35, but, whatever he But is, when you know. look at his age in mid-30s, but, you know, he's got the arm of a guy maybe in his late 20s. Exactly. And, and, uh, and you know, one of, the, one of the good things Smoke did. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. Um, he's Mikey Montuck. All right, so let's talk a little football because <clears> I know it. that's a passion of yours, Absolutely. man. Let's I mean, you're a guy that considered playing football in college, chose the baseball route. Um, big Saints fan, big LSU fan. Let's talk LSU for a minute. Let's do it. Um, you, I'm sure, just like any, you're blown away and amazed what LSU's offense looks like because this is we have never seen this. I mean, we were excited when Jamarcus Russell and Matt Flynn, you know, would put up some good numbers, but the scheme, and not to take anything away from Joe, but I think whoever played quarterback, you know, is going to have some really nice numbers. Now Joe's another level, right. but. This is a totally different style that I think LSU has now adopted and will move forward with. Uh, I mean, this is what we – you watch the Pac-12, Pac-10, or Big Ten, uh, Big 12. You watch all these different conferences and you see them putting up numbers and you see the schemes. And that's what we've been wanting, right, for the last 10, 11 years. And you keep hearing we're going to change the offense, we're going to change the offense, and we never do. Well, I'm the ultimate optimist. So I, every year I go in there thinking, okay, they've had, they've got to make a change. They've well, seen because we hear that. Oh, they got some new wrinkles right, this year. Right. They got some well, new things. This isn't a wrinkle. This right. is like a whole new philosophy and a whole new style. And look, Joe Brady gets a lot of credit and he deserves it all because he's brought that scheme in. This started back half of last year is Joe uh, Burrow really doing making the, the next leap because really that was his first year ever starting. Been in college for a couple of years, but – and then Ensminger said, you know what, we've got to make changes, but this is the only change we're able to make with the offense we have implemented. So you do that, you bring in Brady, who comes in and says, okay, these are, what, these are the schemes we need to do. This is why we do it. Changes the entire culture of the offense. And then you got a guy who's so obsessed and dedicated to learning his craft and being the best he can be in Burrow at quarterback that, I mean, nobody expected this to happen. We expect it to be a, good, a, really, a lot better offense, but this is the number one offense in the country. You know, like Joe's going on there, he's making reads, he's making checks, he's making the right throws, he's putting the throws where he wants to throw it, and it's just it's very, very fun to watch, and it's it's a breath of fresh air. I don't know if you noticed this, because I know you were at your uh, uh, your bachelor party over the weekend <laughs> and joined Jamaica, uh, so you probably didn't spend much attention watching Texas-Kansas, which was a 50-48 Texas win over Kansas. But what's interesting is I've got the you know ESPN app, okay? Yep. They're not a sponsor. Pay the four ninety nine and get the ESPN Plus app, so and watch the less miles, you know, behind the scenes kind of. Uh, I think miles to go is what it's called. Okay, it's 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 very interesting for a lot of reasons, some of which are not always good. But if Les Miles would have done what he did last week, he would still be the coach at yep. LSU. 
Going into the bye week, Les Miles fired his offensive coordinator, which was an older guy. The offense was sputtering. Uh, they lost to Coastal Carolina. They pulled out of – scored seven points at home against Coastal Carolina in week two. They they won a game in week one against, like, Northern Illinois or Southern Illinois, but barely on a last-minute play. I mean, the offense was awful. Other than the, the crazy second half they had against uh, Boston College where, you know, they ran some spread and they scored a right. bunch and won a Boston College game on the road, the offense didn't look good. But they've got weapons. They've got some transfers. He fired his coordinator, and he promoted a, a coordinator from um, a, a guy from within, a young guy who had studied under Gus Miles on a couple years, wrote a book on the RPO offense, you know, implemented at the Division II and NAI level as a head coach, and it, and wanted to finally get into D one. He got his chance, and in one week, two <clears throat> weeks really, count the bye week, in two weeks, transform transform the offense. Should have beat Texas. They missed two field goals and like an extra point or two. Right. And put up 48 on the road. Yeah. And Puka Williams ran for almost 200 yards, the Hanville product. I mean, if Les Miles and, – and look, I'm sure and, – and give him credit. You learn from your mistakes. Exactly, tonight. yep. He he didn't make that change w- 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 when he should have with Cam Cameron after he had that second life against Texas A&M. He's watching LSU and seeing Coach O go from a guy somewhat on the bubble for his job to being now going to get year. a five-year extension and a big old raise – because he was willing to take a step back and change, it, 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 you know, give Les Miles credit. He finally did it. One hundred percent. You said it, you said it best. Sometimes the mistakes that you make are your best learning tool, right? So everybody wants to talk about. I had confidence in O because he had all those mistakes he made at Ole Miss. I said, you know what? He went to Ole Miss, couldn't get a head coaching job. This is his home state school. He wants to be here. He's going to do whatever it takes to win. Whether that means he's learned not being stubborn. And Les is doing that now. You know, when he's here, when he was here, he was winning with what was working, quote unquote, getting just doing just enough to get by. And, you know, at some point the game kind of caught up to him and he got fired because of it. And now he, he had a couple of years off and he's learned from his mistakes. And I mean, you're right, he never would have fired an offensive coordinator midseason. We had what four or five different under him and all the offense were the same. So that tells you one thing is it's his philosophy that he's trying to implement in the offense. But I'm happy for him. I really do like Les, and I'm just glad he's 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 figured it out and he's doing well. Well, a couple things. I mean, one, you know, it's just going to help him in recruiting because he's obviously showing that. All right, we're going RPO, and now I don't know if he'll have that coordinator next year. That guy, unfortunately, may do too good of a job and be at a bigger school than right. Kansas. But nonetheless, this it, is going to give him a little second life. Now, let's see if he fires his defense coordinator right, and brings right. in a new one because right, right. they gave up 50 and they couldn't hold the lead and they had a chance to win that game. That would have been so amazing. Although, if you're an LSU fan, you want Texas, you to, want Texas to win that game. You don't want them to lose because that, that hurts you if, if you need it, if you don't go 12-0. and 0. Um, But uh, but it's an amazing story, and I, I, I encourage you to pay the $4.99, download the ESPN app, watch the, the Miles to Go, the little kind of behind-the-scenes documentary. It's about... 20 minutes along, it's once a week, and it, you learn a lot, and uh, it, it's 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 pretty in, in, interesting. Um, let's get back to LSU. Uh, Joe Burrow, uh, right now he's number one with a bullet for the Heisman. Absolutely. With Tua having the ankle injury, not being able to play next week, putting up gaudy numbers, not being able to play for over half the game against Tennessee and put up gaudy numbers, which, of course, Alabama didn't cover because Tua was out, and that cost me. But anyway, um <laughs> Bad game, where you said earlier. Yeah, right. I'm earlier. Bad, I, mean, I am a bad game. But I think it's very simply put, if Joe beats Alabama, I don't care if he throws for 150 yards and no touchdowns. If LSU beats Alabama and goes 12-0, and Joe will win the Heisman. His story's too good. The numbers will be there. He'll throw for 40-plus touchdowns. Yep. He'll have, you know, maybe the SEC record for, for yards in a season, you know. But they'll be 12-0, and and the story no, it's unbelievable. is going to win it for him. I think you're right. I think he doesn't have to have a great game against Bama to win it if he beats them. I think that, now Grant, I think that we are going to beat Alabama. Obviously, I guess I'm the ultimate optimist, but this year is just people are moving the ball a little better on them, and our offense is been hitting on all cylinders. Defense is playing better. I think that even if he loses to Bama, but we have he plays well and shows, like, hey, like, doesn't matter who you put up against me, I'm still going to do it, and it's a tight game and it's close. I think I think that performance still does it. I think I don't think he has to be Bama to win it. I think if he loses though, he has to have a performance of like okay, he was right. He had they to throw didn't for lose three hundred yards and three four right, touchdowns, right. but they 
they lose, you know, 42-38. Right, like yeah, that. that's right. crazy. That we're saying right. the Alabama LSU game 42 Well, you know, Alabama with all their, you know, their injuries on defense and playing all the young players. And, and you know, I, I think Tua will play in the LSU game. We don't know it to what percentage right. he'll be. Last year, Tua had the same high ankle sprain procedure injury on his opposite ankle right. of the one he had hurt now. But he had 29 days between the time he had the procedure and the bowl game. And, of course, he had a great bowl game. This time around, he's only got 20 days mm -hmm. from the time that this and LSU. Yeah. And so, you know, that bodes well for, for LSU to kind of contain him a little bit because I think they, he's got the best weapons in, in foot, you know, football in college. I mean, his receivers are sick. Yeah, Waddle's the fourth guy, and he's <laughs> right. ridiculous, right. right? I mean, it's we actually had this debate this past weekend. We're just talking about it. And I think, the, I think if we hold them under, if we keep doing the 30s, we win. Yeah. And I think, I think it's – and I think we can. I really do. I'll say this, though. I'm concerned about the field goal kicking. You know, Cade York has struggled the last three weeks. He's missed a, a field goal in the last three games. He missed an extra point. Uh, well, I mean, he made the field goal by hitting the upright and getting an amazing bounce this past weekend, but he also missed an extra point. And it's beyond that. You know, his body language is terrible. Even some of the field goals he, he made, you know, one ekes in the left, one ekes into the right. You know, that we we, we – he, I'm, I think it's time because field goal kickers, as you know, so temperamental. It's all mental. It's like my golf game, man. Right. I can have the shanks and go, what the right. heck is going on? And I can't fix it for a while. And then eventually you get it fixed. But it might might take you 30 swings before you fix it. I, I think in Cade York's case, as a freshman, he hasn't earned the right to just, here, here's the job. You can miss all you want, and that's it. I think you got to put pressure on him and, and practice. Open up that competition a little bit and, and put some pressure on him for these next few weeks and, and say, hey, look, you know, if you don't win it, we're going to let this other guy. Because, I mean, anybody can make extra points. It's about making field goals. And, look, that's been a problem for LSU – I mean, for Alabama yeah. over the years. That's how LSU won the 9-6 game in 2011. This time around, I'm not as confident that we're going to make that kick on the road. I agree. I just – there's a there's a tricky – you have to it's, – it's a it's a tricky situation because he is a freshman. Mm -hmm. and you say, you know what, you won the job. And by saying, hey – Take, maybe taking him out the lineup, take you say you're not the starting kicker. That could say, he could say he's a freshman. That, that, that could be worse. That could mentality. break his, yeah. his resolve. But at the same time, if you say, look, we believe in you, we're going to give you as much help, practice, work as you possibly need, and yeah, put as much pressure on him in practice. There's just no pressure like a game with 95,000 fans screaming and it's on the road against Bama, and you're down by two with two seconds left in the game. You know, yeah. and we got spoiled last year with. Our unbelievable field goal kicker, was and it was incredible. just incredible. Yeah, but you know, I think that yeah, he's had a, a rough couple of weeks. Um, I think, f like anything, like especially as a hitter, you're in a slump. You get one hit, you get out of it. I think it's just one big kick. Hopefully, hopefully, we're beaten in the first half. He has a, a big kick against uh, Auburn next this weekend, yeah, and get some confidence. He makes back. it, and then I think maybe that'll be it. But right now, it's like he's just it's, he's babying it through. And yeah, it's tough. And, and you know, and and. Watching the thing I don't like is is I'm a big body language guy, you yeah. know, because he's he's, you know, as a young player would do. I mean, he's pouting over there. He's kind of temperamental. I saw, you know, the you know, special teams coach was talking to him and Von Rosenberg, uh, who's about a ten year difference between your punter and your kicker, um, and they were talking to him right after he missed some extra point, and and he was kind of you know had a little attitude, and 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 I get it, but uh, I'm a little nervous because. You're going to yeah. need every point yep, every to point. beat Alabama. Yeah. You're going to need every point. No, you're right. You're right. He's Mikey Montuk. I'm Ronnie Rant. Sports Shorts presented by LaBears. A lot of great shows coming up over at LaBears, by the way. Uh, Parish County Line in concert the night before the Texas A&M game. Going to be a sold-out show in the event center. Make sure you get your tickets through Ticketmaster.com. A lot of other great shows as well coming up. Aaron Neville is going to be coming back in December doing a little Christmas show. Buy all your tickets at Ticketmaster.com or go to the Sundry Store inside LaBears. He's Mikey Matuk. I'm Ronnie Rance. We'll come back. We'll tell you about an event that Mikey Matuk's putting on over at LaBerge uh, for his foundation. That's coming up next.
you're an avid sports fan, then you need to check out the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame, located in historic downtown Natchitoches, next to the Chateau St. Denis Hotel and the Natchitoches Convention Center. The Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame is where the rich history of Louisiana sports is told through the pictures, artifacts, and by the legends themselves in video archives. Come to the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame and Northwest Louisiana History Museum and visit a world-renowned architectural marvel. For more information and to purchase tickets to the annual Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame events, visit lasportshall.com backslash purchase. Politicians are making things way more complicated than necessary. The priorities are pretty simple. Fix our roads and bridges so people can get to work, school, and back home safely. Protect tops, technical schools, make our classrooms smarter, safer. Put the focus in healthcare back on care. And it's time for a 21st century jobs plan. It's not complicated. Gus Rance is right. It's not complicated. Gus Rance for State Representative. Introducing the Mercedes-Benz family of vans, including the full-size Sprinter and the mid-size Metris. If these are your wingtips, if this is your gourmet latte, then these are your vans. Vans for professionals, strictly professionals. Best commercial van residual value according to ALG and starting at just $25,995. Mercedes-Benz, vans born to when you come to Relief Windows, your experience starts here. Or here. Then we come to your home. We measure twice. And then we bring custom windows to your home. We remove your old windows. Install your new windows. Clean our mess. And we make sure you're completely satisfied. And all of this before you pay a dime. And at Relief Windows, our number one product is customer satisfaction. <laughs> Can't get enough sports shorts? Tune into Sports Shorts TV on Cox HD Channel 1013, Mondays at 8, Tuesdays at 9, and ETL Channel 4. That's 52 weeks a year to get educated on sports by the best. Joel Davis and Ronnie Rance. Welcome back, everybody. Don't forget Sports Shorts Radio, Saturday mornings, 10 to noon on ESPN Radio in Baton Rouge. Myself, Joel Davis, sometimes Buzzy Hido when he's not like hunting or fishing or playing golf, and, uh, and lots of other guests. Uh, we'll be. Uh, Broadcasting this week, courtesy of the folks over at the Rum House. Go by there, check out their brunch Saturdays and Sundays. Before we get back to Mikey Matsuk, we'll tell you about uh, for folks coming up. The elections are coming up November 16th. you got the governor's race, a lot of other elections going on as well. Vote for my brothers, uh, Gus Rance, state rep over in the Lafayette area. That's District 31. Uh, give him a chance to help represent you. Uh, a Lafayette guy, but graduated from uh, high school at St. Thomas More and uh, uh, wants to be your state rep. That's District 31. Give them a vote on November 16th. Let's get back to Mikey Matsuk. Um, we're talking a lot of LSU football. We'll talk some Saints this second, but before we do so, LaBear's a title sponsor. You've been doing uh, events over at LaBear's with the Mikey Matsuk Foundation for a number of years now. you got a cool new event coming up. Tell us about it. <clears throat> yeah, so I've had, um, in the past, we've had events there where we've done more of like a gala, sit down, you know, and, and I've done different things where we've had a magician, we've had a performance painter, and just to kind of keep it interactive. Well, yeah, Paul Maneri's got one of the paintings. Uh, yeah, in he his tells me about it all the time. Yeah, <laughs> it's Frank Sinatra. Uh, Frank Sinatra. <laughs> and so, um, you know, this year we want to make it a little bit more fun and, and maybe get as more people there. You know, because with the gala, the tickets are a little bit more expensive. So this year, the event's called Taste of Louisiana, and what we did was we got some of the best restaurants around Baton Rouge, and they've donated their time and some of their food and. They're going to have booths set up, and they're going to have some dishes that they've prepared, and um, we're still selling tables and tickets. So you buy your table, you buy your tickets, you have a spot to sit, you can walk around, you hang out. We're going to have a VIP hour from 6 to 7, and it's going to be former athletes, football, baseball, whoever um, you know has, has agreed and to donate their time. They're going to be there so you can come interact, hang out, have some drinks, have some food. <clears throat> we have the Chiwis playing. So we have great a great band. band so yeah. we're going to have – it's just going to be fun, more of a reception-type atmosphere, which is if you're from Louisiana or have ever been to Louisiana, 
that's what makes Louisiana great is food, good people, and a good time. And so that's kind of what I want to incorporate. And the money that you raise through your foundation goes to what? So the money that we raise is goes to the uh, education, the awareness of heart disease, and we're focusing more on early detection. So um, we have a bunch of plans that I'm going to announce at, at the event um, moving forward and stuff that we want to do. So basically uh, the short version of it is moving forward, we want to take your money that we've been able to raise and we want to positively impact and directly impact people. So we're going to try and, and give some free scans and do some hard drives where we're, we're paying for the scans. We're testing people to um, hopefully detect something that they had previously known and, and, and hopefully save as many lives as we possibly can. What's the date and how can the folks get tickets? The date is November 5th at La Berge, a Tuesday night from 6 to 9, VIP from 6 to 7. Tickets are on sale at matikfoundation.org. Um, you know, you can be a sponsor. You can buy individual tickets. You can buy VIP tickets. Um, you can donate if you just want to donate and you're not going to be able to make it there. But it's for a great cause. It's something that I'm very, it's very close to me. I'm very passionate about. And my vision and my goals are to grow this, and, and we can't do it without your help. MyTookFoundation.org. Check it out. Going by. Going to be a fantastic event. All right. I know you're going to be in the Dome. You're going to be in that number on Sunday. Uh, I don't think Drew Brees is going to start on Sunday. I think he'll dress. I think he'll be the backup. Don't think he'll start. There's no reason to. Um, you know, you, even if you lose to the Cardinals, you'll have gone five and one under Teddy Bridgewater. You got the bye week coming up after that. Let's just get him a hundred thousand percent healthy. Let's not try to push it. Now, Drew, the ultimate competitor, is, wants to be on the field, but uh, they got the Cardinals. Who, by the way, uh, you know, I was a big Arizona fan. I lived out in Phoenix a number of years in the '90s. Uh, Cardinals weren't very good when I was out there, but I enjoyed following them. They're kind of one of my teams. But, man, they, they, things are starting to come together for the Cardinals. They won a big game. They were an underdog on the road in New York, and they beat the Giants. Yeah, they're, they're, they're playing well. You know, obviously they had, you know, Kyler Murray's there, and I think he had to learn a little bit and some some growing pains and new coaching. St- everything's really new. Yeah. Um, so it took them a little time, but, you know, they're playing really well. Um, be a challenge for the Saints defense that's been one of the best in the league. 100%. It's a different – they haven't seen anybody like this yet. I mean, they mm-hmm. haven't seen a guy who's going to run around like he does, an mm-hmm. athlete under center. So – It'll be interesting, but like you said, I don't think Drew should rush it. He's not. He shouldn't play unless he's he's at 100. percent If he's 100 percent by this week, then I think he plays. Um, but like we talked earlier, I think this is the best job Sean Payton's. If he hasn't locked up Coach of the Year, I don't know what he has to do because I mean, he's five and zero with Teddy under center. Teddy's good enough. He's not Drew, but he's good enough. Um, but what he's done so well is he's put him in positions to win. Everybody else has picked up the slack. Defense played really well. Special teams have been playing really well, but. He's puts Teddy in this position where it's like, hey, look, these are what you, this is what you're good at. We're going to create motion. We're going to put these guys in the right position so that we can make what you do good even better. And, you know, they're using everybody. They won last week without Kamara. It's just it's impressive. Well, the thing that's impressive, the Saints are all rallying. They understand that they don't have Drew Brees in the, in the lineup, and they're winning on the road at Seattle, at Chicago. These would be big wins with Drew, Drew Brees in there. And, oh, by the way, they under, over, overcome – you know, a couple of Will Lutz missed field right. goals. They overcome a kickoff return for a touchdown, and they win easily. Right. They overcome two onside kicks right. that they allow. That nobody in the league had returned an onside, recovered an onside kick all year. The Bears get two in a row, but uh, fantastic stuff, Mikey. Thanks for joining us, no, man. Thanks for having Best me. Best of luck, November fifth, Mikey Matuk Foundation. Yep, right. uh, MatukFoundation dot org. MatukFoundation dot org. Uh, he's Mikey Matuk. We're uh, we'll be. Uh, uh, visiting with him throughout the weeks now that he's back uh, getting married in January. Thanks to Will Harris, who joined us on Sports Shorts earlier, as he will be in the World Series taking on uh, Andrew Stevenson and the Nationals. Have a good week, everybody. Politicians are making things way more complicated than necessary. The priorities are pretty simple. Fix our roads and bridges so people can get to work, school, and back home safely. Protect TOPS, technical schools, make our classrooms smarter, safer. Put the focus in healthcare back on care. And it's time for a 21st century jobs plan. It's not complicated. Gus Rance is right. It's not complicated. Gus Rance for State Representative. 
If you're an avid sports fan, then you need to check out the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame, located in historic downtown Natchitoches, next to the Chateau St. Denis Hotel and the Natchitoches Convention Center. The Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame is where the rich history of Louisiana sports is told through the pictures, artifacts, and by the legends themselves in video archives. Come to the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame and Northwest Louisiana History Museum and visit a world-renowned architectural marvel. For more information and to purchase tickets to the annual Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame events, visit lasportshall.com backslash purchase. Introducing the Mercedes-Benz family of vans, including the full-size Sprinter and the mid-size Metris. If these are your wingtips, if this is your gourmet latte, then these are your vans. Vans for professionals. Strictly professionals. Best commercial van residual value according to ALG and starting at just $25,995. Mercedes-Benz. Vans. Born to... When you come to Relief Windows, your experience starts here. Or here. Then we come to your home. We measure twice. And then we bring custom windows to your home. We remove your old windows. Install your new windows. Clean our mess. And we make sure you're completely satisfied. And all of this before you pay a dime. And at Relief Windows, our number one product is customer satisfaction. Relief Windows! 